Welcome back. We're on chapter eight. We're gonna jump right into it. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Level four, internalization. Starting to get good. Is knowledge controlling you or are you controlling knowledge? My identity in the form of my knowledge gives me the rules and guidelines by which I live my life. The fourth level of attachment, internalization, describes a degree of attachment to knowledge where our identity becomes the model by which we accept ourselves. This domestication, this is domestication through attachment. At this level, our narrators have begun to set the conditions by which we domesticate our identity. They measure our acceptance and rejection of ourselves and others based on the beliefs we use to construct the mask of our identity. We will distort this information we receive to reinforce the conditions of what we expect from life. The narrators also serve our need to validate who we are in our personal dream, as well as the face we present in the dream of the planet. Our knowledge is corrupted. It is no longer a clean reflection, but a smoky mirror. Our sense of self is the personification of our beliefs, and will be subjugated by the need to fit in with the dream. Thus, our mask may not necessarily be the form of our passion, but we will wear whatever mask we think we need to be accepted. At this level of attachment, our focus is on the internalizing and idealized versions of our identity. We may be projecting a false image of self to secure our acceptance. This is a direct result of our domestication through conditional love. Acceptance is the reward of domestication, while rejection is the punishment. Although these conditions for acceptance and rejection may not be as rigid as the next level of attachment, they are learned and ingrained through the constant interactions we have with others. We use these conditions as guideposts for accepting and rejecting other people, but also and especially ourselves. The attachment to this mechanism of acceptance and rejection itself. The attachment is to the mechanism of acceptance and rejection itself, which corrupts knowledge to fit our sense of self and influences how we relate with life. At this point, we've lost our respect for self and others, and conditional love is all we know. One day, I had just gone back from being in the park of Tehuacan, a Mexican city, and decided to go to my hotel for a hotel room for a couple of hours. I turned on the television onto a program in which two young women were combing a beach in Mexico looking for the best and worst fashion on the beach. They were both dressed stylishly. As they walked the beach with confidence, they critiqued and ridiculed whoever they judged to be poorly dressed. The camera would then zoom in on unflattering shots of the unsuspecting beachgoers. In the segment, it seemed like everyone was receiving a final grade. The two hosts were apparently the only well-dressed people on the beach. Towards the end of the segment, however, they ran into someone they deemed to have dressed even better than they were. One of the hosts walked up to the fashionable lady, showered her with praise, then asked her to share her fashion wisdom. The change of the host's demeanor was incredible. They went from being unmerciful judges to subjugated followers. I watched the show. As I watched the show, I couldn't help but think back to my teenage years, where walking down the halls was very much like this television show. I had been both the recipient of criticism and the critique, the critic myself, working on an Im- image where uh, adulteration was the expression of acceptance. Adulation. Adulation was the expression of acceptance. I remember feeling uncomfortable when I was the focus of not meeting the standards of one group, and I remember how righteous I felt being the critic in the group I identified with. This kind of behavior isn't limited to to appearances or trends. It occurs in spiritual circles, in the workplace, and in many other facets of life. The mechanism of, of our conditional love, the judge and the victim, has been mastered by many individuals. I have seen some people turn the the identity of a Toltec into a catalyst for our own domestication by turning the agreements for pursuit of personal freedom into conditions of acceptance, even rejecting others who engage in traditions that are different from ours. So it doesn't matter what the belief is, attachment at this level will corrupt it. To continue with our dietary example, let's say a person who calls herself a vegan now uses her identity as a catalyst for her conditional love. In order to be worthy of her own love, she must be a strict vegan, not stray. 
least she feels the wrath of her self-judgment. She surrounds herself with other vegans who confirm the worthiness of being a vegan by accepting and judging themselves and others. She limits the people in her life who she limits the people in her life who are not vegan and will try to domesticate the people she loves to change their diet, feeling pity for them for not being awake to her point of view. Thus, she is consistent. She's in consistent conflict with points of view that do not side with her own. She is still eating a healthy diet, but she imposes onto herself and others the knowledge that goes along with her preference in life. Her mask of identity still reflects the passion of her authentic self, but the smoke has created a distorted image of that truth as domestication has set in. Only unhappiness stems from the judgment, the judge and the victim mentality. To live up to these conditions and be accepted, we hide who we really are, not from others, but also from ourselves. We are completely confused, believing that the mask we have created is who we are. We create what we believe is an acceptable image for conditional love, regardless of the passion and preference in life, and project an image solely for the pers- purpose of acceptance. The image of a luchador, the image of a luchador, a Mexican professional wrestler, comes to mind, always fighting for fame and fortune while he keeps his enemies from taking off his masks and exposes his true identity. He is also trying to take off his opponent's mask so that his shines brighter with glory. Attachment at this level results in disharmony between mind, body, and soul, and this is reflected in all of one's relationships. The only glimpses of peace come through individual victories, and these moments are far from permanent. In the vision of the dream of the planet, that appears to be in constant conflict. So those moments of victory are far from permanent. This is the vision of the dream of the planet that appears to be in constant conflict. That was chapter 8, level 4, internalization. Uh, Where in the society do we see people internalizing ideas? Where do we see people uh, pushing it? I'm going to finish off that chapter. We're going to go to chapter 9. Stay tuned.